to To The Point. I'm your host, Eric Mitchell. And that first segment got you going, right? Your blood is going. You probably went into the commercial break going, okay, I either need to drink or uh, figure out life. Uh, crazy, crazy way to go into your Monday evening. I know, folks, but this election has people pretty high strung. And knowing this, I wanted to bring on a good friend of mine. And I think an amazing guest for you. You're going to see this gentleman all over TV here during the next few weeks as the election really hits... Well, I can't say fit hits full swing because it's been in full swing for since 2016. But this campaign, which seems to get crazier by the minute and hour as we do this. So I'm going to welcome my good friend to the show today, uh, Mr. John Burgos. John, how are you today, my friend? Eric, I'm doing great. So happy to be here with you. Awesome. It is great to have you here. And that is for sure. So, my friend, you are lucky. You live in the furthest place that you could be a U.S. citizen and still live in America. And no, folks, I'm not talking about Puerto Rico. And yes, I understand it's a territory. Certain people need to make sure they understand that. I'm talking about the beautiful state, the Aloha state. You're, you're coming to us from beautiful Hawaii, which has a place in my heart after being stationed on the island of Oahu, where I think everybody's at. But uh, so that spirit of Hawaii, I think it's interesting of the topic you talk about, because the spirit of Hawaii is one of the most amazing things, right? That kind of Aloha vibe that you have to live there and be part of the culture to understand. And granted, I look like a Howley because I am, but being stationed there, you definitely pick up the vibe and understand it. So election 2020, how do people keep calm when the world is on fire around them? That's my simple first question for you today. Yeah, well, that's actually a great question because the question for me isn't really how do we keep calm? It's how do we get into what's coming up for us and, and acclimate to it and have a relationship with it instead of trying to go into something that's artificial for us. Oh, perfect. I mean, and I totally agree with that. Uh, you know, definitely is something that people don't understand when it comes to just being fired up. And you've probably seen it. There's no way you haven't. Uh, being on social, people are really lost their minds. I mean, there's some crazy, I mean, the fact that every morning I can guarantee I'll see three things. One of them is always sports, which it warms my soul. But the other one is always someone going, everybody needs to keep calm, keep calm, keep calm. And the other is I'm done with Facebook until after the election because I can't deal with people. Why are people so easily, why has social media become this connector where everyone's angry? I remember when social came out and I'm aging myself here. But when social came out, this isn't what I remember the platform being. We were so fascinated by technology. And I feel, in the la maybe I'm wrong, but in the last decade, we've become very angry, opinionated, one-sided people. How do we center that boat and bring it back to the middle again, where everybody's kind of like, okay, cool, we can be on here and share information, but not, be it's my way or the highway. John, you're wrong. I don't believe in anything you say. You could be in Hawaii, and I'll be like, no, you're in Arkansas. So, right. so how do we change that pivot point, John? How do we bring the boat back to at least center? <laughs> yeah, well, it's, first of all, it's important that we realize what we're consuming. And when we're consuming information, how is it prompting us to react? What is it invoking within us? Social media is a tool where it promotes a very quick parasympathetic response where the first emotion that gets emoted tends to lead along the way. And then we leave it and we're not sure why we feel drained or discharged or have these strong opinions. But it's because we're allowing that first primal instinctual reply from our nervous system to take the lead. And what we need to do is realize again what we're consuming, how it's being demonstrated to us. Again, all this information that we're receiving and really what's leading the prime in social media. So in other words, social media is perpetuating that we're the consumers of it, but it's actually the opposite way around. We've become the product that the social media platforms are selling to big companies, to big organizations, to voting organizations yeah. that are trying to determine who is going to vote in what direction. So if we are prompted or, or reacting in a certain way because we see something that there's algorithms running for for us to see i mean there's actually an algorithm in the social media platforms that guides us to those things that we're going to emotionally respond to at first 
So if we can start noticing that first and be aware and, and allow the information to run through us and bring up our critical thinking rather than our emotional reaction, we start taking control back over our responses and our emotions and how we are with other people. I love that. That, make, that makes a lot of sense, Sean, because, well, I mean, would you say it's a form of bullying? Let's, you know, we're, we're adults here. I mean, would you say that's the world we're in now is it's adult bullying? That nightmare a lot of people have of their childhood is now the bullies are just older. They're not the high school or the eighth grader. They're, they're now older men or women. It, I'm, everybody's involved in this party. Uh, is that what this would would you take it in that kind of angle? Like everybody's just become bullies or is there a different thing? I, I mean, I don't know how to put I, I call it me, call it the host thing, but I really want to go. OK, this is what it is, because it makes sense in my brain is, OK, it's election year. So we're a little crazy. It's always a little wonky. The election years, we all agree to that. It just seems lately bullying is at a all new level where I mean, I've I've personally been challenged to fight people on Facebook. I mean, I'm in my 40s. I am not the guy that you want to fight. It's just, I mean, I don't, I mean, you can't take somebody serious from a keyboard anyways. But I mean, where are we at with this? I mean, would you say people have just become so angry and now bullying is the, what we get when we throw this into a blender? And how do we stay away from this? Yeah, well, again, it's realizing that these platforms, they're media, they're advertising, they're trying to get us to consume in a particular way. So I would go into another level beyond bullying, which is the initial reaction where people are seeking safety or seeking power, and it's manipulation. And we can understand that information is being manipulated to sway our opinion one way or another. We can come back to our own center and realize that we can form our own opinions instead of taking somebody else's pill or their medicine that they're prescribing to us, even though it's not for us. It's yeah. what they're dealing with. I love it. So let me ask you this. And we got a couple minutes here before we before we're done. But let me ask you. So here we are, 20 some less than 20 days until November 3rd. Now, we've had this conversation offline, you and I, uh, as most of my guests have. We all recognize this election will not be solved on November 3rd. And you're like, I live in Hawaii. It's never solved on November 3rd. No, because you guys, <laughs> time change doesn't allow for it. But for the rest of us, by normal even here on the mainland, on the West Coast, uh, by midnight, usually we know who's president. East Coast, usually they know in the middle of the night on the, on the day after. You guys usually know in the morning time. That's not going to happen. So this is going to, to say 20 days away is probably a misstatement. So we're going to deal with this. So how do people like, find Zen? in the next 19 days, because it's, it's gonna be impossible to turn off your phone and shut off what's going on in the world. I mean, even sports has been infiltrated by it. COVID-19 is rampant in all sports right now. And we're distracted, we do have sports, but we only have sports on Thursdays and Sundays. Uh, the NBA is finished, basically it's over. WNBA is over. We have baseball and we have football. Our distractions are gonna go away where it's just gonna be us going, oh, here we are. I mean, we saw the debates the, both of them have had their own issues. We had a fly show up for the last debate. And then this new debate, that's going to be happening later in this week. It could happen. It could not. One person says they won't attend. The other person says they just want to do a town hall. How do we keep everybody together in this boat from just turning this into an all out civil war? Because I love one thing about you is I love how you keep everything common in a box. But then I look at that box and I'm like, it must be nice because the box to me looks like it's on fire all the way around it. And everybody's like, Civil War times are close. I mean, that's just the kind of feeling people get. So how do we ease that back? John, tell me, tell the folks out there how they could remain calm by still having to take in this news because you can't run and hide from it. It's going to find you. It's just timing and media these days. Well, I want to get to a place of empowerment where we don't want to calm it down, that we want to be with what's coming up and be current but also not be carried away by the manipulation that's happening from either side of the coin. So the distractions that we're used to going into, and because of COVID, we can't even get into consumerism. You know, for an Amazon shopping, that's getting old. Even consuming on Netflix and on YouTube, we're finding there's a decline on that because there's so much time that has been spent already on there that people are have gotten bored of it or looking to consume other information. And so 
the time of distraction not being there has given us an opportunity to attune to what's happening to us individually. It doesn't matter what happens to Mr. Pence right now or the president, what their reactions are in the media. We're only interested in it because it's more like a soap opera right now. But to really come back to our own story and what's happening in our own life, what's happening in our relationship with our spouses and our children, and we direct our energy there and our attention to how do we create that sovereign state that we want to within our own nuclear family, then it starts to crackle out. And we don't seem like we're out of control and victimized by circumstances and what's being portrayed on the news because what's happening here in Hawaii isn't affecting you out on the West Coast. Not personally. We pick up on stories and we want to care and we want to go in and try to fix or be empathic and, and try to send good energy out if you will but the truth is that we're in different silos and if we focus on our own silos if we focus on what's happening to us here right now and invest our energy there instead of leaking energy somewhere where that investment doesn't return a dividend then you're going to find that that your individual life is going to change for the better you're going to start making better choices the clarity of them and what you consume is going to serve you much better, but we have to get away from the distractions that have been trained us to get out of our own mind, to get into monkey mind, to be in reaction mode. And it's from there that we really start making the systemic changes that we're looking to make personally in our communities and in our country. Uh, very well said. I love that. That's uh, that's a basic. It's, it's sad that we have to have this conversation. Uh, I mean, basically, if I broke it down in my little brain, it's basically hacking your own algorithm for your own body, right? To put it in, 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 in new generation terms, you're hacking your own algorithm. And you need to. I mean, it's such a thing. It's ama- I, we just had a guest on our show last week, and we were talking about sitting down at the dinner table. Something mm-hmm. that I was raised on doing as, as a child. We always had dinner together at least once a week because my mom was a single mom working, doing amazing things. But sitting down at the and including my grandparents, because I was raised around my grandparents, you know, greatest generation, you know, colonel in the army, love my grandfather before he passed, still love him, but you know, he's not here to give a high five to, and boy, I'm sure he'd roll his eyes, guys who took the beach at D-Day, they probably, they're looking at our country going, put him, go back, <laughs> start over, we're done, so, I mean, so we're, here we are, and this is the, the last question for you, for this one, because I'm bringing you back after the election, so we can figure this all out together, and remind people they have to get along at the holidays because <laughs> that's next. <laughs> uh, so I always a- challenge a guest to give our audience something to take away from everything. No matter what you're doing, you should have a takeaway. What are, is there something that people can do today to start hacking that body algorithm to get themselves back to the normal? We're saying, I'm going to sit down with my family for dinner and not talk on my phone doesn't need to have a bat, a pat on the back or a commercial or like high five. You did something that four years ago you never needed to say. And I'm not picking on the administration. I'm saying four years ago, it seems like that was normal. Hey, just put your phone over there. But we've seen shows, the, the, the great dilemma on Netflix, kids cracking into the safe to break out their phone. And that's real. That's not made up. People actually do that. So what are some tips and tricks that people can use today to get them through what is certainly going to be mass chaos no matter where you look? Well, the, the first thing, I wanted to provide an alternative to hacking because yeah. hacking provides a quick fix, yeah. a quick entry point, a quick exit point where we're going to change something from the surface level. And I actually want all of us to go deep, to allow information to actually penetrate. When you consume something and you have a reaction, actually pause. Just pause for a second and be with what's coming up and let it attune through you because as we attune with it it runs through our system and then our critical thinking can come in alignment with it we're functioning from another place when we're in reaction our brain is in a whole different universe if you will so again if we just slow down it's like oh, i'm just reacting. i had anger come up or i had jealousy come up or i had you know the, I, I was condemning this or condemning that yeah. it's like wow it just came up in me why why am I allowing this to take me away from myself? Yeah. How am I giving so much power to someone else? So can I ask you I- a real quick question when you tie that in? Because it's something that comes to us all the time. So you kind of triggered it. Sorry, I hate to interrupt you in your train of thought. But 
It comes up and our audience always asks. Fitness. Fitness is a big, it's a healthy, it's a good mechanism when you're feeling that stress, right? To kind of get away. I know, I know there's breathing techniques. I'm a big fan of that. We had a get, we, you know, we have a guest on after you this week that's gonna be talking about having, have, having, having, I'm butchering this to death, but he did this whole like rubbing his arms, hands, face, which was pretty cool because I went and tried it afterwards. I did part of it, you know, I tried it out because I wanted to see what it was like. He was demoing it before we interview him. Uh, but I mean, physical fitness is something I find when I'm heavily stressed out, even in foul weather. I have a Peloton, I have headphones, and I find my happy place in music and literally in the core, we call it destroying ourselves. That's what I do, but I come out of that and I'm on that high, the runner's high automatically, but I'm also on that, that stress is gone. <laughs> And well, we come back into our body. Yeah. Again, we leave ourselves when these emotional pings come up through social media or through media outlets. So there's a part of us that just takes off, if you will. And so when we move our body, whether it's if you're cycling, running, or for a walk in nature, even deep breathing techniques, anything that would get you back into your body, you're not fracturing, you're not splitting your energy off in other places that takes you away from yourself, that takes you away from your critical thinking, that takes you away from the clarity that you have. But again, we're giving our energy exchange to something else outside of us. And it it has our bodies going into a nervous response system that triggers anxiety, that triggers anger, and none of that serves us. So exercise is huge because, again, it brings it back home, if you will. Awesome. Well, that that's perfect. That is, uh, I like that. That's that answered my question for sure. And we're gonna have to have you back. Number one, I love that your whole you, you this episode today has been very high, right? It's like we came in. I, I don't know if you had a chance to hear Richard before you came on, but Richard was hammering away, and I, I get it. He's angry. He's heavily involved, but you bring the calmness, and I, I like. I think this is the perfect way for the show today because now I'm like. And it's true, it's simple, even your tone and the way you say it, it's very calming and, and we need that because so many of us, I know I'm guilty of it, I get fired up and trust me, the, the voice raises up, I'm like, let's go. And you're like, yeah. it, it's so easy. I mean, I come from an athletic background, we've had you know guests on our show talking about that, you know, especially athletes, it's hard. Go ahead. Yeah, I like to share the both perspective. That's something yeah, that comes up also because when we see someone who's so passionate and on fire and has such a strong opinion in one side, it, it evokes a certain emotional memory for us as well. So if we see someone standing up to who we think is the bully, it's like we want to take their side and we want to go there because <laughs> there was something in us that wanted to be protected when we were young that perhaps we weren't. Or if we were the ones that were perpetuating, hey, you've got to lead this way, nothing's gonna happen unless you actually you know, enforce your will to others, then there could be resonance there also. So if we can start attuning again to those things that stemmed from our childhood even and start having that awareness, it's we can start getting to a place that we're not repeating our childhood. Yeah. Um, we don't have to think from the seven, eight year old brain anymore and we act that way. We can bring it into the current events and the current circumstances and create the type of lifestyle and environment that we want to be in. But we have to get away from the reaction and the taking sides from the highly charged energy of the bully on either side of the, the pendulum. <laughs> and that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I like that and I'm like that you jumped on to add that to that because it's totally, uh, it's good insight. And man, it's, it's been great having you here and I'm sure our audience has a lot. So before you go, uh, obviously everybody knows if you need it and you miss it when John shares the following information. Just know everything and how to get a hold of John is in down below in the comments, both on C-Suite TV, here on YouTube, and on Facebook. So make sure you go check those out. But John, best way for people to connect with you. I'm sure you're gonna get. I'm you're sure you're gonna get some contact off this. Everybody wants to find a way to have inner peace. You should have inner peace in your life, anyways. But kind of having this, it's okay to be masculine and still have feelings type of behavior. Uh, what's the best way for folks to reach out and contact you? Oh, God, the, the website, um, johnburgos.net. Okay. Um, the best way to get a hold of us, or look for me on social media. We're all over the place. And again, we're providing all types of support as we're going through these amazing times. I really feel that we're in a, in a renaissance, if you will, rather than a collapse. And what's on the other side, it, it's becoming positive because of what we're willing to go through now. 
it makes sense. And I want to thank you for joining us today because it's been absolutely amazing having you on today. It really calmed everybody down, sitting everybody into their Monday in a great way. So John, John Burgos, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to have to get you back real soon. So thank you so much for joining us today. I'd love to be back. Thank you. Thanks. Everybody else, we'll be right back to close out the show after these messages. <laughs> 